We're back for more Clockwork Castle. This episode, we're gonna read part two of um, Ludwig's Journal here in the, the Great Mage Hall, which is very cool looking. Reminds me a lot, actually, of the White Gold Tower in Oblivion. All right, two of four. All right, how long are we talking this one? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, so we are talking quite a few pages. Okay. Journal of Ludwig Clodovec, part two. So with the last seed, fourth hour 17. Now the father is gone, they pester me to expand the mausoleum in readiness for my eventual passing. Next in line, next in line to die. Fine. Shall order the excavation. Fourth of Rain's hand, fourth hour 18. It's like turning over a rock and finding that twisting tunnels of an ant nest exposed to the sky, and yet here the inhabitants did not scatter or erupt in panic. They merely stood and stared with those red pin pricks for eyes. Seventh of Rain's hand, fourth hour 18. I should explain. In expanding the mausoleum, the workers broke into some ancient catacombs of the Dwemer. They were beneath our feet, beneath the castle, all this time. Perhaps it should not be too surprising that the lofty tunnels are home to some Dwemer ruins also. It is also so strange, though. Where do I begin? I've read all about Dwemer and Amonculi. All I could lay my hands on, as those were some of my favorites, but I have never seen any mention of what we found here. The workers called me down when they were about to breach the wall. There we all stood, clustered around the hole. On the other side was our mirror image, a congregation of meadow men staring at us with their glowing red eyes. I was afraid, we all were, but while the workers all fled to the mausoleum, I remained frozen in place. Expecting your imminent death is a significant shock, but an even greater surprise awaited me. A metal woman came forward and spoke. She spoke to me. At first, her words were unrecognizable. Was it the Dwemer language? Then she spoke in Cyrodiilic that was slow and halting. No harm, she said. I could manage no response. No harm, she said again. But this time, to the metal men and women behind her. Now she stands here in the study with me, reading the books. I think she asked for them? I brought her here on the day of the breach, but I have forgotten what we spoke of. I said a lot in my panic, and she said very little. It all happened so quickly. Her brethren have all remained behind down below, but she has not left the study. She's looking at me! I told the Rain's Hand, 4th Hour 18. Her name is Lamash, too. Her progress in learning, Sir Derelic, is astonishing. She reads my books and listens to the conversations of the staff, and already I can converse with her easily. The servants are not glad to have this audience, though. That much is clear. They are plainly afraid of what we have uncovered, but it is just as plain to me that these metal men mean us, well, no harm, as Lamashtu said. Lamashtu has promised to show me Nurndural, for that is the name of the Dwemer Catacombs beneath us. Actually, she has said that she will have her, I suppose, brother, Lahar, show it to me. I think she wants to stay in the study. She says that she and her metal brethren are called the Gilded, but I am, as of yet, unsure of what they are exactly. Apparently, they've always been beneath our feet and have never ventured out. They do resemble the animunculi. That is all I can say. I realize more and more each day that the discovery of the Gilded is a monumental one, but Lamashtu has requested privacy. I'm not sure of her reasons, but I can certainly think of my own. Dormer and Amunculi are known to be generally hostile and quite dangerous. I dread the thought of what might happen if some kind of military attention fell on them. The staff may spread tales. How could I stop them? But I have heard how they speak of this discovery. I doubt anyone will believe the particulars of their tales. They will be thought of as just that. Tales. <clears throat> First of Second Seed, Fourth Era 18. The resources to be found in Nurndural are beyond my ability to count or really value. In particular, that wonderful metal, that famous Dwemer metal that confounds all who try to look on, unlock its secrets of its fabrication. I did put the question to Lamashtu, but I am no smith or alchemist, is all she would say. She has answered many of my questions about the truly amazing machines down there, though. I can barely sleep. It feels like my mind is on fire with possibilities. Lahar is taking up to his new job as well, too. After showing me some of Nurndural, he followed me back up to the castle. 
Uh, I did not mind. Even to begin with, he was almost as well-spoken as Lamash too. I think. She must have been teaching him. Or perhaps he already knew. Much like Lamash too sad, Lahar began to follow the staff and observe their work, to their valuable, visible chagrin. Before long, he expressed an interest in taking up the role of the caretaker as the castle. Already, he is invaluable. He is careful, quick, and most remarkably, does not appear to need or want for sleep. Oh, oh crap. When my studies in, of Nurndural's machines come consume my attention as to my plans regarding what I what I what regarding what I learned from them. I took Tilamash to as representative of that domain, domain of her domain and of her kind. And besides Lahar, who is agreeable if simple, she is the only one able, or perhaps willing, to speak with me. The others merely stare as I pass and ignore my attempts at conversation. I asked her permission to salvage what scraps of metal could be found lying broken and useless in the halls of Nurndural for use of my own works. However impassive her manner, she did agree. This is tremendously exciting. The metal can be melted down and reshaped as I desire, and there is m so much of it to be had. I go to work. 28th, 35th of mid-year, 4th hour, 18. The mausoleum has become a thoroughfare. Metal. Warped scraps and whole pieces both. Carted out of Nurndural and into the workroom by small groups of gilded. There the casting molds await. Things are taking shape. Eh, <laughs> molds shape. It was a funny joke. Alright, let's continue exploring. I'm curious. How long did that take? Uh, it took a good seven minutes. <laughs> oh. It's on south. Glass guard. Talk about empty. Oh, thank God. Canis root for my tea. All I was ever asking. That leads back to the castle grounds, which will allow me to talk to Lamash too, I, th I think. I assume that's what it leads to. Um, let's go do that, actually. So you're just not hearing my voice the whole time. <laughs> so you get to hear a metallic voice scream at us. Guten Morgen. You're still here. The steam pipeline's broken. I see. So the travel machine isn't working. Yes. Then you can stay. Stay here in the it castle? You are trapped here, therefore you cannot leave here, therefore you must live here. Lahar said to ask you for the key to the mausoleum. Yes, I had him give me the key. Lahar can be simple. If he had decided to go back down there and try to fix the pipeline again, he might not have returned. Could I have the key? You wish to try to fix the pipeline yourself. Very well. Here. I have questions. I may have answers. What are you? I am a machine of bone and metal. Bone? Are you undead? I am a machine. I am made of bone and metal. Are you of the Dwemer? Somewhat. Can you tell me something of the Dwemer then? Very well. Abakchu Markikchui Thumbs Amakai. Oh, thank you. No, you wouldn't. The strange ghost was following me in the tunnels. Ghosts are not particularly unusual. They are a recognized phenomenon. Yes, but there's something unusual about this one. How so? It followed me for a long while, but did little else. I see. Uh, just being near it hurt terribly. I see. It made a strange wailing sound. A sound. I see. Never mind. Very well. Why do you only you and Lahari live here? Hogwood Castle has been cut off from the outside world for well over a hundred years. Until you came along, that is. Of course, the destruction left in your wake means that once again, no one is going to find this place. Lahar mentioned his brothers and sisters. We are the gilded. He means the rest of our kind, down in Urnjiral. Though we may all look the same, we are not. What do you mean? Three children grow 
broke their names upon the world. The first plunged it into the dirt. The second carved into the flesh of a tree. The third chipped into solid stone. Thus they recorded their memory upon the world. The first child's name was washed away with the first rain. The second child's name grew and distorted with the tree until it died. The memory survives, but twisted almost beyond recognition. The third child's name remains unchanged for as long as the stone endures. The gilded down below are the first children. Lahar is a second child. I am the third. Your voice is unusual. I have no mouth, no lips, no tongue and no throat. Profound. My heart shivers in my chest and words are produced from my speaker horn. Very well. Fine. Okay, so that's the greenhouse area. Let's go back into the castle hall and read part three of the journal. Journal reading time. And then, hopefully after this episode, you'll only be hearing uh, one more journal entry, which would be part four, obviously. Hello. Hello. Uh, Do you need something? Nope. Like how it's an oblivion gate. Okay. Wait, I thought that was like... I could have sworn it was in like a different position. Whatever. Alright, oh, oh, between the pages of this journal you find a key. Tied to it is a label which reads Master Bedroom Wardrobe. Fantastic, we'll do that this episode as well. Oh no! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, Talos. Okay. Alright, we're talking quite long here. So, I may as well just stop the timer entirely. Alright. Alright. Journal of Ludwig Klodovec, Part 3. First of Sun's Height, 4th Era 18. The staff are all leaving. This has been building for some time. It's their fear of the Gilded. More and more of their number are effectively taking up residence in the castles. They help with my work. As with Lamash 2 and Lahar, they also took to observing the staff in their daily tasks. Never speaking, just watching. I think it all became too much. Perhaps it's for the best. I'm told that the company is not doing well. Less money is coming in. In truth, it's a relief. I never know what to say to them. Anyway, even Annalise, she was always kind to me. She actually asked me to leave as well. That's not something I could do, though. Especially not now. I could have sworn that she looked... disappointed. It'd be nice to think of why that might be. But that can't be it. it must be in my imagination. Still, it's sad to think that I will... likely not see her again. In any case, Lamashti was quick to point out that the staff are not even truly required any longer. Not with her brethren being here and able to take up their work. Today I offered to pay them all a wage for this work, but Lamashtu declined, saying that all they needed was something to occupy them. Lahar echoed this sentiment. I suppose they'll have to take them at their word. None of their brethren will speak to me, after all. Third of Hearthfire, or there are twenty. Behold! The common tap or spigot! The pipes of cast metal to ferry the water! The appropriated Dwemer pipe! And the steam to make it go! Steam! Steam under pressure! It makes it all go! Now I have water at the turn of a tap. Heated water, even. That Twimmer boiler was perfect for the task. 23rd of 1st Seed, 4th Era 21. Today I have learned that Clodovec Trading Company is no more. By accounts, it was in slow decline since the Red Year and Mother's death. But now it's finally happened. We all have our share of the remaining wealth and... It's not insubstantial. I do not have to worry for myself or my remaining family. Indeed, I've continued my jewelry business all this time, even overseeing some of the guild and creating additional pieces. Some things need to be arranged, but overall, this is nothing to fret over. Things here won't change. Fifth of Rain Sand, Fourth Era 21. I can't abide first time meetings. Can anyone? No one knows what to say to one another. Who are you? They would say. What is it that you do? 
by which of course they mean, please describe your quantifiable worth to society in a short sentence. Sixth of Frostfall, fourth era, twenty-one. Father's beautiful glass garden perched atop the castle never did function as he wanted. It would never hold the warmth the plants needed. It all leached into the frigid mountain air and the plants froze and died. Now that I could tap into that seemingly endless surprise of pressurized steam produced by some unknown means deep in Nurnderal, the glass garden is finally as warm and vaporous as I could ever want. 14th of Sun's Dawn, 4th Era, 23. An amazing discovery today, though I would not have known it for, were it not for Lamash to. In excavating a new room for the cellar, the worker struck what appears, by its curve, to be a great metal sphere. Dwemer metal. Like everything down there, but unlike any of the other items of Dwemer manufacturer I have ever seen. Lamashtu came to look at it, and it seems that she recognizes it. After some thought, she said that it had been called a machine for far walking without steps. A rough translation, I think. I am simply calling it the travel machine for now, as that is apparently what it is for, teleporting one to a far off location and back again. She speaks of it as if of a barely remembered thing from one's childhood. But Lamashtu tells me that the machine is like a crossroads with paths striking in out in many directions from it. At the end of each road is a terminus machine, and this is where one would appear upon entering the traveling machine there. Similarly, entering a terminus machine would bring one back here. I've asked for the workers to uncover the sphere in its entirety. This is very exciting. 30th of Hearth Fire, with our 23. The travel machine is to be my own grand project. Quite early on, we found a kind of panel on the surface that could be removed. Behind it were etched a series of pictographs that Lamashtu aided me in deciphering. We've concluded that they give instruction in the assembly and operation of the machine. The work required is lengthy and arduous. It would be impossible were the Gilda not here to help me. A large chamber to house it must be dug out and supported with stonework. The machine itself has been buried in the dirt for who knows how long. Excavation continues, but it's painstaking. After that, it must be raised up, righted, and supported in place. It must be cleaned thoroughly, inside and out. Broken pieces must be recast and replaced. It is to require an extraordinary amount of piping. There's a lot of unused down in Nurnderal. But will it be enough? I expect this to take years, but it is the power of teleportation, and not just in the hands of powerful mages. It is hard to imagine what a boon it would have been to the Clodovic Company. Uh, had it not close its doors. 22nd of 2nd Seed, 4th Era 24. Work on the travel machine continues. In the meantime, I have been inspired by the idea of the travel machine to create my own structure that facilitates fast transportation of items across the castle. It relies on the principles of pneumatic pressure to propel items through pipes that have been laid between the floors and behind the walls. My first practical test was a pipe that ran between a terminal in the kitchen and one in my bedroom. It worked much as I expected, uh, though the first attempts were messy. I shall expand the structure of pipes throughout the castle. It will be more disruptive than the gas lights were as the pipes were much longer, or are, are much longer, but worth it in the end, I feel. Funny thing also, I've heard that rather than Clodover Castle, people have come to call my home Clockwork Castle for all the machinery here. It's a fitting name, I think. I like it. 11th of Rain's Hand, 4th Era 30. I am frustrated by the interminable work required by the travel machine. So much work and yet so little to occupy my time. I simply lack the strength of the Gildan, and for now, there's nothing I can help with. To alleviate my boredom, I recently began work on a method for controlling the machine. It is something I've given a lot of thought on how to inform the machine of where I want to go. I am sculpting what will become a cast metal relief map of Skyrim. Only Skyrim. Lamashtu assures me that it could not take one anywhere else. Once cast, I will affix some mechanical buttons to it in places on the map that the machine can take me. It shall be beautiful. I certainly have the time to make it so. For the Frostfall, 4th Era 32. Today, one of the gilded workers struck me as we were working on the travel machine. He had been giving me odd looks all morning, so I had kept an eye on him and 
turn and saw the blow coming in time to mostly evade him. He still caught me on the arm and knocked me to, to the floor, raising a nasty bruise. He stood above me, silent all the while, and for a moment I feared for my life. Fortunately, I then heard Lahar rounding the corner and looked to him for help. But now it was Lahar looking at me oddly, sprawled on the floor as the worker had already turned back to this task as if nothing was amiss. Still, I had to tell Lahar what had happened. I hardly feel safer on the Gilded these days. He said a soft something to the worker that I didn't catch, and my assailant left for Nurndural without a word, later to replace, be replaced by a different Gilded. I'm thankful that the machine is nearly finished. 20th of Sun's Dusk, 4th Hour 33. It's a lot like a musical, turning a musical instrument. Fine adjustments until the right tone is struck, and the travel machine stirs to life. A bright blue portal shining in its heart. This is how we find where the thing can take us. Which terminus machines out there yet still function? I was reluctant to go through the shimmering portal. How could we truly know where it led? Or even if one would arrive with both life and limbs intact? What if an unfriendly person awaited on the other side? Lahar did not seem to share my concerns, however, and strolled through the portal before I knew what he intended. He was gone so long that I thought him lost, and when he returned, he was cacked, cacked, jeez, cacked in dirt, as if he had dug his way out of a grave. I saw the banners of Whiteron, he said to me. The caravan brings us mead from there. I marked down the tuning, and we moved to the next. Lara went fearlessly into the portal, and again and again, though now I made him cover his metal body with what clothes would fit. He would be a strange sight indeed to anyone who might see him. Otherwise, Ninth of Evening Star, 4th Hour 33. Today, I took my first steps outside Clockwork Castle in over a decade. How is it that so much time has passed? It was well outside the castle, too. The travel machine works. I stood outside the Mark Carth Clockwork Terminus for several minutes, watching the crowds across the river entering and leaving the city. So many people! That was enough for me. I returned to make this entry. There were long years in which I thought this day would never come, but now it is here. The machine works. Now there is no more need for the caravans to make long trips through the Velothi tunnels, delivering my supplies. Lahar has said that he will do it instead using the travel machine. 18th of mid-year, 4th hour 35. This morning I awoke to find that all the gilded, excepting Lamashtu and Lahar, had left during the night. Lahar says they have all returned to Nurndural. To be honest, I'm relieved. I was beginning to feel like a prisoner in my own home. I dared not enter a room if one of the workers was in there doing the chores. I don't know how to properly describe it. But for some time now, they have exuded such a sense of menace that I feel danger around them. Fortunately, Clockwork Tassel has earned its name with all the work I've done here. All the labor-saving machines, the workers are no longer needed. Lahar is more than enough. After all, there is no great entourage here to feed and clothe. No mothers, fathers, children, dogs. There's just me. Only me. Rip. Okay. Uh, next time. Stuff. Thank you all for watching.